The United States will submit a draft resolution to the United Nations Security Council today. This is to urge for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza war and the release of hostages held by Hamas. The US, which has previously repeatedly blocked calls for a ceasefire, is reversing its stance over the war and Israel. The draft, draft resolution reportedly calls for a ceasefire for roughly six weeks. It'll, put, it'll be put to vote today. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin will meet Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant next week at the Pentagon. The two ministers will meet to discuss the Israel-Hamas war and security issues in Gaza. It will be their first face-to-face -face meeting since the start of the war. Mexico has said that it will provide protection and support to migrants affected by the Texas border law. The Mexican government plans to provide them with an allowance of $110 a month and an opportunity to work for different companies. This comes as U.S. lawmakers fight to put the law into effect. The to Texas border law would allow state authorities to arrest and prosecute migrants suspected of illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. In Venezuela, lawmakers have approved the creation of a new state in Essequibo, a territory which is contested with neighboring Guyana. This comes uh, despite an ongoing international court case over the Essequibo region. The International Court of Justice is to decide which country the territory belongs to. However, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has said that he does not recognize the ICJ's jurisdiction over the dispute. Escalating violence has resulted in the death of at least two gang leaders in Haiti. Ernst Hulme and the head of the Delmas 95 gang was killed yesterday. His death came a day after the killing of another gang leader. Hulme was a member of gang leader Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier's alliance. Meanwhile, India executed Operation Indravati to evacuate its nationals from Haiti yesterday. Under this, 12 Indian uh, citizens were rescued and uh, moved to the Dominican Republic. Uh, India's external affairs minister announced this via a post on the social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter. He thanked the government of the Dominican Republic for their support. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi landed at Bhutan's Paro International Airport this morning. He was welcomed by his Bhutanese counterpart with a warm hug. During the visit, uh, the Indian Prime Minister is scheduled to attend various programs aimed, aimed at enhancing India-Bhutan bilateral partnerships. Yesterday, the trip was postponed due to harsh weather conditions over the Bhutanese airport. Meanwhile, the Chief Minister of, in, uh, of India's capital, Delhi, was arrested by the country's law enforcement agencies yesterday. The Enforcement Directorate has arrested Arvind Kejriwal over a liquor scam. The case accused uh, members of uh, Kejriwal's Aam Aadmi Party of receiving bribes from liquor businesses in exchange for preferential treatment. With this, Kejriwal becomes the first sitting Chief Minister to be arrested in India. A Chinese lawmaker met with a North Korean delegation in Beijing yesterday. During the meeting, the leaders agreed to further promote their friendship and strengthen communication. This comes as China and North Korea marked the 75th anniversary of their diplomatic relations. Australia and uh, Australian and British ministers have begun their annual talks in Adelaide. Earlier in the day, Australia said that the British firm Bay Systems had been selected to build submarines under the AUKUS Security Pact. AUKUS is an agreement between Australia, the UK and the US. Under this, Australia will buy up to five nuclear submarines from the US in the early 2030s. The pact will also make Australia the seventh nation to operate nuclear-powered submarines. Kenya's nationwide doctor strike entered its seventh, uh, eighth day today. Leaders of a medical union are asking the government to fulfill agreements reached during a previous strike. In 2017, scores of people died after doctors went on a protest which lasted 100 days. 
Among the demands now is a comprehensive medical cover for doctors and the deployment of 1,200 medical interns at public hospitals. Nigerian President Bola Tinubu has placed a three-month ban on public-funded foreign trips by ministers and other government officials. The ban goes into effect from April 1st. This is aimed at curbing government spending on these foreign trips. In Russia, rescuers struggle to free 13 people trapped in a gold mine. Rescue workers have managed to drill a half of the 262-meter mine. The miners have been trapped under the rubble for almost four days after a rockfall incident earlier this week. In climate news, at least three people were killed after storms and tornadoes swept through three U.S. states yesterday. The storms battered the states of Kentucky, Indiana and Ohio. According to reports, about 50 other people have been injured. Meanwhile, hundreds of wildfires are raging across the U.S. state of Virginia. Fires have also affected the state's uh, Shenandoah National Park. Officials have said that more than 1,600 acres of land have been scorched by wildfires. Hundreds of firefighters are working overnight to contain the blaze. Over 40 climate leaders and ministers met in Denmark yesterday. This was to discuss the goals of the next UN Climate Summit, which is scheduled for November this year. Denmark's climate minister, Dan uh, Jorgensen, has said that the meeting will be used to draw up a strategy for new climate financing targets. He added that they will push for countries to adopt more ambitious plans to deal with the climate crisis. In Belgium's capital, Brussels, environmental activists blocked roads ahead of the European Union's nuclear energy summit. EU leaders were meeting to discuss the revival of nuclear energy in the region. The protesters denounced the summit and called for a focus on renewable energy sources instead. Greenpeace activists gathered outside Mexico's Ministry of Foreign Affairs yesterday. They were demonstrating and calling for solutions to combat plastic pollution in the oceans. They handed over a petition to the Mexican ministry calling for a plastic-free ocean. The demonstration came ahead of the fourth intergovernmental meeting on plastic pollution. The meeting is scheduled to be held in Canada next month. A new study has found that heat waves that struck West Africa in February this year were worsened due to global warming. This is according to a Europe-based climate group, World Weather Attribution. Last month, temperatures in the West African countries reached as high as 40 degrees Celsius, affecting millions of lives. 16 U.S. states have sued the federal government. This is over the government's pause on approvals for the export of liquefied natural gas, or LNG. The states argue that the uh, U.S. federal government lacks the authority to ban these exports. Earlier this year, U.S. President Joe Biden halted approvals for uh, citing environmental concerns. On to business and tech news. The U.S. Department of Justice has sued tech giant Apple. It accuses the firm of monopolizing the smartphone market and harming smaller competitors. Apple also faces allegations of inflating the prices of its iPhones. The U.S. Justice Department said that the lawsuit seeks to change Apple's business model. Meanwhile, Apple CEO Tim Cook inaugurated a new Apple store in China's Shanghai yesterday. A large crowd gathered outside the store during the opening ceremony. This is the iPhone maker's 57th store in the country. Its opening comes as iPhones face tough competition in China from rivals such as Huawei. Meanwhile, the European Commission is reportedly preparing to announce its investigations in, or into some U.S. tech giants. Uh, they include Apple, Meta Platforms and Google. The probe will examine whether these tech giants violated the Commission's new Digital Markets Act or DMA. 
The DMA came into effect earlier this month. It aims to ensure fair competition in the European digital market. Meta's social media platform Instagram reportedly suffered a service outage yesterday. Over 5,000 users faced difficulties accessing the photo sharing platform. As per reports, the service outage lasted for over three hours and now appears to have been resolved. So far, Meta Platforms hasn't issued any statement regarding the incident. Shares of the social media platform Reddit rose, by, uh, rose up to 48% during its first trading session. The firm's shares were listed on the New York Stock Exchange yesterday after its initial public offering. Reddit's shares uh, began trading at $34 and rose to over $50 by the end of the day. Microsoft is reportedly paying more than $650 million to an artificial intelligence startup called Inflection. This comes after it was accused of poaching as many as 70 Inflection employees earlier this month. This included the startup's co-founders Mustafa Suleiman and Karen Simonian. The United Nations General Assembly unanimously adopted a global resolution on artificial intelligence yesterday. The resolution calls for the monitoring of artificial intelligence risks. It also encourages personal data protection during the AI development process. The non-binding resolution was proposed by the US and co-sponsored by 122 other nations. European plane maker Airbus has secured orders for 65 jets from two Asian airlines, namely Japan Airlines and Korean Airlines. Japan Airlines plans to purchase 21 A350-900 jets and 11 A321neo jets from Airbus, while Korean Air has ordered 33 A350 jets from the firm. Both the airlines are otherwise considered key Boeing customers. Hyundai Motors and its sister company Kia will recall over 147,000 vehicles in the US. This is after a damaged charging unit was found in some of their car models. As per the US road safety regulator, the issue potentially increases the risk of a crash. Hyundai is recalling over 98,000 cars, which include certain Ionic and Genesis models. Meanwhile, Kia will recall 48,000 vehicles, including certain models of the EV6 cars. A United States labor agency has filed a complaint against Elon Musk's SpaceX. The firm is accused of forcing laid off or terminated employees to sign an illegal agreement. The ag agreement prohibits them from filing any lawsuit against the firm. It also bars them from criticizing SpaceX. Moving to sports, in cricket, the world's biggest T20 league, the IPL, starts today. With the reigning champions, the Chennai Super Kings, looking to defend their title under a new captain. Rudraj Gaikwad will be helming Chennai for the IPL after Mahendra Singh Dhoni stepped down yesterday. The match between Chennai and Royal Challengers Bengaluru will be held at the MH Adambram Stadium in the Indian city of Chennai. Australian spinner Adam Zampa has withdrawn from the IPL 2024. Media reports say it's due to personal reasons. This comes as a massive blow to the IPL franchise, the Rajasthan Royals. The Rajasthan Royals have replaced Adam Zampa with Mumbai's Ranchi Trophy hero, Tanush Kotian. In football, Arsenal forward Bukayo Saka has pulled out of England's squad for their upcoming friendlies. This is due to an unspecified injury. England's forthcoming Euro 2024 warm-up matches are against Brazil and Belgium. Those are England's last games before they announce their Euro 2024 squad. India were held to a goalless draw by Afghanistan in the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifier yesterday. The Blue Tigers came close to scoring through Manveer Singh on two occasions. India have now won once, lost once and drawn once in their three Group A clashes. The two teams against uh, face each other again 
in another leg, which will be held in India starting on March 26th. In tennis, eighth seed Maria Sakkari of Greece advanced to the third round of the Miami Open yesterday. She demolished China's Yuan Yue 6-2, 6-2 in straight sets in a match that lasted an hour and 19 minutes. Sakkari's opponent in the next round is 28th seed Diana uh, Yastrem, uh, Yastremska of Ukraine. In badminton, ace Indian shuttler PV Sindhu lost at the quarterfinals of the Swiss Open 2024. Sindhu won the first set 21-16 to world number 27 uh, Tomoko Miyazaki of Japan. Uh, but her campaign came to an end after she faltered 19-21, 16-21 to the 17-year-old Japanese uh, sensation in subsequent sets. Meanwhile, in the women's doubles of the Swiss Open, Indian duo uh, Tressa Jolly and Gayatri Gopichand advanced to the quarterfinals. They defeated their compatriots uh, Priya Konjeng uh, Bam and Shruti Mishra 21-10, 21-12 yesterday. Uh, the Teresa Gayatri duo will now take on Australian pair Satyana Mapasa and Angela Yu. Veteran table tennis player uh, Sharath Kamal has been named India's flag bearer for the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. This was announced by the Indian Olympic Association yesterday. The flag bearer at the Olympic Games is the first person to march for the country's delegation in the opening parade. Kamal is a two-time Commonwealth Games champion and a Kale Ratna awardee. Legendary Indian boxer Mary Com was appointed the uh, chef de mission for the Paris Games. Uh, chef de mission leads uh, the and represents the country's delegation during the event. The IOA said, and I quote, Mary Com's unparalleled dedication to sports and inspiring journey makes her a natural choice. Com will be assisted by uh, Laga Shiva uh, Keshavan, who has been appointed the deputy chef de mission. In Formula One, Ferrari's uh, Charles Leclerc uh, topped the timesheets in the second practice session at the Australian Grand Prix. Leclerc clocked a time of 1 minute 17.277 uh, seconds at the Albert Park circuit. He was 0.381 seconds ahead of Red Bull's Max Verstappen, who dominated much of the first se session. In entertainment news, the rapper Eminem's 12th studio album will be released this year. This was revealed by American rapper and producer Dr. Dre during his appearance uh, at the American talk show Jimmy Kimmel Live. BTS member Jungkook became the first and only K-pop star to reach 1 billion streams on Spotify in 2024. This was according to the World Music Awards. He is currently serving in the military and will return to music in uh, 2025. Beyonce will be uh, graced with the Innovator Award at the 2024 iHeart uh, Radio Music Awards. This uh, comes days after her eighth studio album, A Cowboy Carter, is due to release. This award is given to one artist who persistently contributes to pop culture and the music industry. Beyonce will appear at the Dolby Theatre in Los Angeles to accept the honor on April 1st. Killian Murphy, known for his portrayal of Tommy Shelby in the hit series Peaky Blinders, is set to reprise this role in the upcoming movie adaptation. The show creators have confirmed his involvement. Filming for Peaky Blinders, uh, the movie will begin in September. Two trailers for the second uh, House of Dr Dragons uh, season were released yesterday. HBO unveiled one dedicated trailer for each of the red and green rival factions on the show. They portray the two sides of the show's upcoming civil war known as the Dance of the Dragons. The fantasy drama series will premiere its second season on June 16th. Star Wars actor Hayden Christensen kicked off a Star Wars-themed takeover of uh, the New York Empire State Building. Actors dressed as Darth Vader and Stormtroopers joined him for the event yesterday. 
The Empire State Building featured Star Wars toy displays and statues. A special light show was scheduled later on that illuminated the top floors. The event was a lead up to Star Wars Day, which falls on May the 4th. American actor Jake Gyllenhaal recalled his auditioning uh, roles in uh, the movies Moulin Rouge and Batman. During a radio show, Gyllenhaal revealed that he was up against Heath Ledger for the lead in Moulin Rouge before even McGregor was cast. He also said that this the first time he ever heard about Ledger. Gyllenhaal also discussed his audition for the role of Bruce Wayne in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy. Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson will join the producing team of the upcoming stage musical adaptation of Smash. Smash is a TV series that depicts the creation of a fictional musical, uh, uh, musical about Marilyn Monroe. The show is expected to open on Broadway in spring 2025. Hudson shared the news yesterday on her daytime talk show named The Jennifer Hudson Show. American boxer Mike Tyson is leaving podcasting to focus on his fight against internet sensation Jake Paul. Tyson's podcast, uh, podcast Hot Boxing, co-hosted by Sebastian Joseph Day, has come to an end. The podcast featured engaging conversations with uh, notable figures like UFC commentator Joe Rogan and WWE legend The Undertaker. The upcoming boxing match between Tyson and Paul is set for July in the US state of Texas. TV personality Kim Kardashian paid tribute to her late aunt Karen Hutton. Hutton's death was announced on Instagram on Tuesday by her sister Kris Jenner. Kim posted an Instagram carousel featuring her childhood images with Hutton. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.